Okay, in this video I'm just going to take a look at the general forms of geometric series. Let's have a look at a couple of sequences. This one goes 2, 4, 8 and 16. And we can see we're times it by 2, times it by 2, times it by 2, and so on. Another one could go 2, 6, 18, and 54. And here we can see we're times it by 3 each time. And both of these are geometric series. So let's try and get a general form for that. Let's call our first term A. And the next one, we can see we times by 2 here, we times by 3 to get here. So therefore, if we call the thing we're times by R, the next term will be A times R. And if we find the next term by times by r again, we'll get a times r squared, and so on, a times r cubed. So if we go all the way up to the nth term, we'll realise that the power is 1 less than the term, so we get a r to the n minus 1. The power is 1 less than the term. So this is our formula for our nth term. Now let's look at the series. So let's look at the sum of the series of a geometric. So Sn will equal A plus AR plus AR squared plus all the way up to AR to the n minus 1. Now what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and find a formula for this. And to do that I'm going to consider timesing all these terms by R. So let's get R times the whole sum. So you get AR plus AR squared plus so on the last, second to last term will be a r to the n minus 1. You can imagine the term before that being a r to the n minus 2 times by r. Incre add the two indices together, you will get a r to the n minus 1. Times this by r, you will get a r to the n. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2 and I'm going to subtract them. doesn't matter how you subtract them I think I'm going to do 1 minus 2 just because I like the way the formula writes out when I do that eventually. So I'm going to get on the left hand side I'm going to get Sn minus R lots of Sn. Now what we'll realize if I take Rsn from Sn AR away from AR will cancel AR squared from AR squared will cancel, and all of the things in between will cancel, right up to AR to the n minus 1 away from AR to the n minus 1. So all I'm left with is A here and AR to the n. So I basically get A, because this is equation 1, minus equation 2, minus AR to the n. Let's factorise the left hand side, so I get SN equals 1 minus R. Factorise the right hand side, I get A outside 1 minus R to the N. Divide both sides by 1 minus R, and I will get SN equals A times, sorry, 1 minus R to the N, all over 1 minus R. And this is the sum of my first N terms. So, here. Now, there is a special um, version of this formula. Let's just consider the series that goes a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus all the way up. And the nth term, well, a is equal to a half. So you've got a half times by, and the um, r is going to be a half to the n minus 1 effectively a half to the m. Now what we've got here is we can see the terms getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Let's work out what the sum to infinity might be. So we go all the way up to a half to the infinity. Yep, we know the nth term is just a half to the n because you times that by that. This is an indice of 1. 
add the indices together, you get a half to the n. So let's just imagine what happens if we sum all the way to infinity. This is a sort of problem where you look at, you go from wherever you are to another point, and you always half the distance getting there. Do you actually ever get there? That's the question. If you sum all those distances, well, let's have a look. So our sum to infinity, using our formula, will be equal to a times 1 minus r to the infinity all over 1 minus r. Now in this case, let's look at the example. If r equals a half, we can see we'll get the sum to infinity will equal a times 1 minus a half to infinity all over 1 minus a half. And this term here if you keep times it by half each time, you get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, so it's almost insignificant. So basically, this is going to tend towards a over 1 minus a half. So actually, if we just take the general format, the sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus the common ratio. Yep, the half is the common ratio. Now this will only happen when r Decrease, um, decreases the term. So therefore when r is less than 1 or bigger than minus 1. So this only works when you have minus 1 is less than r or r is less than 1. And some books will write that as the modulus of r is less than 1. I.e. if you make r positive it's less than 1. So it only holds this formula only holds when this is true. So this is another formula that we need to know for our geometric. Let's go through the things we found. Sum to infinity is equal to a over 1 minus r when r, these conditions are met for r. The sum of the first n terms is equal to a open brackets 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Now it's worth noting some texts will write it like this. And in actual fact, these are exactly equal. All that's happened is you times top and bottom by minus 1. If you times minus r by minus 1, you get r. Times minus 1 by minus 1, you get minus 1. So r minus 1. Do the same here, and obviously the signs will change. So if you do see this, and it's different to what I've written, don't be too worried. And we also know the sum of the first n term, sorry, not the sum of the first n terms, the nth term is equal to a r to the n minus 1.